So I'm at Ananda Village with Nancy and Carrie, who are residents here and also the designers of the gardens. Thank you both for taking time because it's quite busy today, so thank you. Oh, it's our pleasure. Our joy. Okay, thank you. Um, let's start with the village itself, just a little brief, um, that this is a spiritual community. How long have you lived here? 33 years. <laughs> Goodness, okay, so that's, how long has this been around? Um, over 45 years now. Oh, it's very nice. And your, the community is about sustainability, self-reliance, um, taking care of the land and lots of open space. That's a large part of our philosophy, is the wholeness of mm. life. But it's based actually on spiritual teaching. So the people who live here follow the same spiritual path, which is still quite universal. And I understood um, from a conversation earlier that this was the original Ananda village. Carrie, do you want to answer that? Certainly, yes, it is the original um, uh, village. This is where the founder of our community, Donald Walters, uh, purchased property in 69 and began building here in the early 70s. <clears throat> and then we got, he got more property over there and uh, was an inclusion of families where um, uh, the family life could be uh, a life that was given to God and then as you say out of that when you have your relationship with God straight businesses and agriculture sustainability all come as a natural thing. Right. How, how many acres are here? I understand it's about a, uh, 900 to 1,000 acres. I think we purchased a little more property, but um, is that true still? Around, around 900. Yeah, around 900. Yeah. And you just kind of acquire a little bit more and add on to... Well, we build. did a little swap there, so I was a little... Um, okay. <laughs> it's, it's been around 900 to 1,000 acres, yeah. Lots of open space. This is good, and that's what makes this place so special. And, and this time of the year, your annual Tulip Open House, as you call it, I love it, and you were the designers of the garden, so tell us the history about that, how you, um, what your vision was, and this must have, if you've been here 30 years, 30 years ago. <laughs> well, I started in the gardens about 25 years ago, and it was really under the guidance of the founder of the community, mm. and he had this vision, you know, not technically, but he had this concept of what the gardens could be. Mm. And he did a lot of the original design in the lower gardens with the swimming pool. He actually sketched that out himself. Wow. And he designed the colonnade and uh, the placement of the chapel, things like mm. that. So he then asked us to start working in the garden and he asked me, even though I had no experience mm -hmm. at it, to design the terraces, some of the terraces that come down. And that was my beginning, actually, in gardening. Well, you've done a good job. <laughs> Tell us how the, about the tulips. What, uh, are some of these bulbs 30 years old? Carrie, you want to talk about the tulips and the, the types of plants that was selected? Sure. No, the bulbs aren't 30 years old. We do, oh. we do plant uh, <coughs> new bulbs every year. Oh. I dig them up and we do uh, give some away for others and that's how we perpetuate the life of these tulips. They, they will come back year after year, although for a, a show garden, they don't come back really in the way that you would want to okay. have a display like this. Oh. Well, that was one of my questions. What were some of the challenges or obstacles along the way of the vision where you wanted this showpiece garden but it didn't exactly come out. Uh, were there a few little, sounds like some obstacles. Well, we have gophers like everyone else <laughs> in our oh, those, area. Those kind of obstacles. Those, that's an obstacle, <laughs> believe me, with bulbs and they love them. And so how, how do you handle that then? Well, we've actually lined beds with uh, gopher wire. Okay. We, it's a lot of wire. It's a lot of wire, but we realized we needed to um, do our best to keep them out. So we've lined the beds, but they will take their fair share. And um, that's part of the reason why we have to buy new bulbs every year. I see. Um, and that makes sense. And share a little bit with them, too. Um, yes. It's their home as well. How many acres in the garden? This particular garden here at Crystal Hermitage is two and a half to three acres. So wow. it uh, keeps us busy. And 
Um, we decided about seven years ago that the gardens have been had been developed to a point where you would want to invite people to actually see them. Yes. So okay. it takes quite a number of years when you're digging out all the red clay uh -huh. and getting in the compost. So, uh, so this would be our seventh annual celebration of tulips, and we've uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Okay, I have to ask about Mother Nature because you can't just make this an annual event like the third April or the third weekend in April because if if the weather is uh, not cooperating, have you or is it always the same group of weekends? Well, April is the time over these years. It's always been, but it's true. We do our best in terms of trying to choose some days because you have to advertise and so forth. Um, but people have to stay tuned to okay. um, literally ca making telephone calls because sometimes, as you say, the weather doesn't cooperate. And so the dates that we've chosen, Mother Nature hasn't really chosen them. So it may happen a little later, it may happen a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so, But we make the dates and we do the best we can. And everybody is now learning that the garden kind of has its own life. And um, right. if it's going to come a week early, then everybody comes early. Yeah. <laughs> People, people can always call and ask how much in bloom are the gardens, oh, I see. and At that's a stage? big help. Yes. And then there, and now we really have them open every day. We have the house open on weekends, and we have you know treats that we offer for sale. On the Yummy weekend. treats, I might add. <laughs> so, what are the what are your plans for your future? What what are you looking to do for next year? Well. We change our color patterns in a lot of the areas every year. So right now we have to start planning for next year's tulips. And Are you just going to give us a sneak uh, preview of what the color is going to be next year? <laughs> well, we try to keep an even balance, actually, of the colors. So okay. no one color dominates right. the garden. And we work hard on that and uh, work with new colors, new tulips that are becoming available mm -hmm. because we always have different varieties every year. And there's also other flowers, not just tulips. I saw lilac bushes, of course, some rhododendron. What are some of the other, um, uh, and looks like fruit trees as well? Well, um, there are, as you say, a lot of perennials, and this year was a unique spring because everything seemed to bloom at one time. Okay. We have the wisteria, the dogwoods right. are blooming, uh, cherry trees um, in the back that are so famous in New York and in Japan for their the uh, cherry blossom festivals, the Kwansan Sekiyama trees, and then, as you said, there's uh, pink lilac and other lilacs are happening and uh, the Daphnes are happening and the tulips yeah. are in full bloom. It's a unique spring. It doesn't always happen like this. So I caught it at a good time, yes. <laughs> All right, Carrie and Nancy, thank you so much. This was a wondrous adventure and I'm so glad I came out. So it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, we're yeah. Thank you. Okay.